Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're answering one of video editing's most heated debates. Which is better, Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro? Let's find out. And hey, if you're not familiar with us, we're all about helping you, the video creator, with templates, footage, tutorials, plugins, audio, and more. In fact, we have tons of free Premiere Pro templates ready to download. I've put a link in the description down below, so make sure to hop over and grab some free stuff. In this video, we're going to be taking Final Cut and Premiere Pro and showing you as many of the pros and cons as we possibly can of each of them to help you determine which one of these pieces of video editing software is best for your particular use case. But this is going to be a longer than average video, so I'm going to quickly throw up here a table of contents to be able to help you navigate. And there should be a clickable version in the description below this video. But let's get one thing out of the way right off the bat. Just because you use one of these pieces of software doesn't automatically make you better than somebody who uses the other one. Really, at the end of the day, when you look at the big picture, they're really similar tools. And a highly skilled editor would be able to cut a high quality video in either of them. Case in point, even though Premiere Pro has had a little bit more love from Hollywood over the years, especially from directors like David Fincher, Final Cut Pro X has also had a hand in creating some big budget flicks. For example, back in 2015, Final Cut Pro X was used to cut Focus, starring Will Smith and Margot Robbie. So don't let any Premiere Pro fanboys tell you that you can't make something just as awesome inside of Final Cut. So now that I've said that, let's jump right into the differences between Premiere Pro and Final Cut. The first big one, Mac versus PC. Simply put, Final Cut Pro X is a program that only runs on Mac OS. So if you're running Windows exclusively, you're not going to be editing on Final Cut Pro at all. And on the other side, you have Premiere Pro, which is cross-platform, which means whether or not you're on a Mac or a PC, you're going to be able to tag team edit and switch between these two ecosystems with the same project. Meaning that you can take your Premiere Pro project and start editing on a Mac, and then later transfer and keep editing on your PC. So what does this mean for you? Well, if you're confident that you're not going to be leaving your Apple overlords anytime soon, you really don't have much to worry about. And on the other side, if you're running Windows exclusively, the choice is kind of made for you. But let's be honest here, it does feel like a minor win for Premiere Pro. Next up, we're taking a look at price. Premiere Pro took the last round, but with this one, it really feels like Final Cut Pro X has something to offer. Right now, Premiere Pro is offered on a subscription model, which means that if you want just Premiere Pro, you're going to be paying a fee of $20.99 American per month. And if you want access to the other family of programs that Premiere Pro can work with, like After Effects and Audition, you're going to have to fork out even more per month in order to have access to all of those. Compare that to Final Cut Pro X, which has an outright purchase cost of $300. No month to month. And when updates roll around, you're actually entitled to those as well. Just keep in mind for software updates that Premiere Pro tends to be a little bit more frequent and consistent than Final Cut Pro X. If you're just trying to figure out whether or not you actually like the software at all to start with, it can feel like a bit of a bigger risk with Final Cut Pro X. But consider this. After just one year of the very, very bare bones Premiere Pro subscription, you're going to be spending $250 by the end of the year. At least. And as you add consecutive years on top of that, time really starts to tilt in Final Cut Pro's favor. Next up, basic design philosophy. Here we're going to be moving away from objective facts and talking about some more feelings-based opinions. Basically, to me, Final Cut Pro X feels like an Apple product, which can be both a good and a bad thing. It's streamlined, it's user-friendly, and it's designed to be more inviting than its competition. It's just got that Apple charm to it, which is really great if, for example, you're just starting out learning video editing. Final Cut is great at speeding up and simplifying processes that 99% of users are going to be needing. Like the media organization, I find a lot more natural and user-friendly within Final Cut Pro X. It feels like it's got that Apple intuition, and like on your first go, you already kind of know how to use it. And if you're migrating over from iMovie, you'll find that you can start to use Final Cut Pro X with very little learning curve. I like Premiere Pro's media organization tab, but I really can't get by with anything other than list view, as opposed to video thumbnails. It would be really good, but navigating through bins that are in subgroupings is honestly just a real pain. Now, while the real core functionality between these two programs is way more similar than it is different, Premiere Pro just has a lot more flexibility in order to meet your specific needs. That's not to say one thing is better than the other, it's just down to what do you need? Do you prefer things to be made simplified or for the possibility to really kind of do anything? 
And a really good example for this is the window layout. Final Cut lets you expand and shrink certain areas, toggle sections on and off, and make it a little bit more in tune with your personal taste. But you really can't detach them and move them around. This to me is a bit of a downside, but it can also be an upside if you're concerned about accidentally making it something that you really don't like. Whereas Premiere Pro gives you the ability to move each different window to a completely different area, making it literally whatever you want. This really comes in handy with multiple monitors, for example. But this flexibility can also give you the opportunity to do something that you really don't like and feel like you've sort of messed it up. And if you're starting out to learn video editing, this can be really, really frustrating, if not actually a little bit scary. These aren't the only examples, and these philosophies of simplicity versus flexibility really permeate throughout both these two programs, and they show up in multiple different places, which is why I wanted to bring it up early on. But for me, this is way more like comparing apples and oranges, no pun intended, and it's really more or less a tie for me. The Timeline and now we move on to one of the most contentious issues between these two programs, the magnetic versus the traditional timeline. Okay, let's get this out of the way right off the bat. The magnetic timeline looks like an absolute dumpster fire to some and like an answer to prayer to other people. For those of you who don't know, the magnetic timeline was designed in such a way that there was this sort of gravitational pull towards the left side or towards the beginning of the timeline. So if you picked up something out of the timeline, you could just expect the timeline to react and adjust in a predictable manner. If you picked something up and pulled it out of the way, everything else would snap back in place to fill the empty space. There's definitely a lot of pros and cons. It's really awesome to be able to have the magnetic timeline adjust to fit your movements. It's surprisingly intuitive, and it sort of feels like there's almost this second editor that's helping you out, pushing and pulling things out of the way in order to make room for what you wanna do. But it can be frustrating when you run into a situation where it feels like you're not able to communicate effectively with that second editor. And you're trying to move a clip and it's just not quite doing what you wanted. Like moving a clip away from the rest of your footage to keep it separate. Or you don't want it to snap back with everything else, you just want it to be off to the side on its own until you can figure out what to do with it. There are actually ways though of getting around this. For example, choosing the position tool instead of the selection tool will in essence turn the magnetic timeline off, so to speak. Which to me is enough to redeem the shortcomings that I personally have with the magnetic timeline. People are really vocal about this, but it's important to remember that video editors are creatures of habit, and this is something that's different from the normal. So don't let anybody's extreme opinion sway you too much one way or the other. Here's the big thing. If you're switching to the magnetic timeline or switching away from it, you're gonna need at least a couple of days of solid editing in order to actually make it feel more natural. You'll get it, it'll just take a little bit of time. And knowing that, these two still feel a little too different to me to say that one is objectively better than the other. So it's another tie for me. Stability and performance. So after working on the same project within Final Cut Pro as well as Premiere Pro, I'm kind of blown away by how much faster and snappier Final Cut is than Premiere Pro. I mean, with general things like playback and scrubbing through footage, it's a clear win for Final Cut. Using the same raw files, I was really surprised by how Final Cut Pro X felt like it could almost handle my media more confidently. Premiere Pro was a bit slower, a bit more laggy, and here's the kicker for me, the experience off of a laptop made that gap even wider. Using a MacBook from early 2013 with the following specs, it was clear to me that Final Cut Pro X was designed to be more easy to work off of a laptop than its competitors are. And to be honest, this really makes sense to me. Apple's always had a really big emphasis on the portable experience and optimizing things to just work. It's clear that Apple expected people to work off of an office desktop just as often as in a coffee shop or on the road. Hear me out on this. Both of these programs work just fine on a laptop. Premiere Pro by all means is not unusable on a laptop, even on a really out of date one. And the fact that Premiere Pro has a really awesomely implemented proxy workflow can really help to narrow this gap but it's sort of a lot of extra steps for something that Final Cut just feels like it sort of does out of the box. If you're gonna be working primarily off of a laptop, you'll actually experience a lot of benefits from Final Cut Pro X. This is really for a lot of different reasons, but what it feels like it comes down to is software optimization, something that Apple is known to be really good at, as well as a clever implementation of background rendering. One of the great parts about Final Cut X is that it lets you more or less not worry about rendering and have a much more smooth and optimized playback experience. It's really user-friendly because it sort of takes initiative and says, I got this, don't worry about it. While Premiere Pro, you would have to either render out your entire work manually, which you can't edit while this is happening, 
or to reduce the playback resolution to have a smooth playback experience. The only downside for Final Cut on this though is that it has the potential to eat up a lot of hard drive space, but this isn't something that's hard to find a solution for. As for stability, well, there's a reason why one of our most viewed videos here at Motion Array is how to get Premiere Pro to stop crashing. Because it crashes. Like a lot. While Final Cut is by all means not immune to crashes, honestly, it isn't even a contest for me. Final Cut Pro X is vastly more stable. If you're working in Premiere Pro, set autosave to every five minutes and have a hotkey set for Control S because I've been burned too many times with a Premiere Pro system crash. So for me, this one is a big win for Final Cut Pro. And now let's take a quick look at color correction and color grading. And here's what I'll say, until October of 2018, I would have said that the tools found within each of these two programs are fairly similar. Both these programs have your basic functions to really take control over your color like waveforms, curves, color wheels, etc. But now with the latest update of Premiere Pro, it's actually much more of a win for Adobe. It's really their update to the hue saturation curve which takes the dial and turns it up to 11. These go to 11. Or at least that's what I would have said if Future Jordan didn't finish editing this video and then realized that, oh, actually Final Cut Pro X has the hue saturation curves incorporated into the program and it's actually been there for longer than it's been in Premiere Pro. So with that being said, why don't we call this one a tie and move on to audio. For all intents and purposes, as far as audio day-to-day -day work goes, Premiere Pro and Final Cut look kind of similar. You can raise and lower audio levels, keyframe volume, add pre-made effects, and edit those effects to be tailored to your specific needs. But here again, I think we have an example of Final Cut's user-friendly attitude versus Premiere Pro's you-can-do-anything attitude. Final Cut seems to be more tailored to getting you 90% of where you need to go in the form of just a quick preset. While making fine-tune adjustments, I find to be a little bit more challenging. Premiere Pro, on the other hand, seems to be built more so that you can take any audio effect and really dial it in. I know that before when we were talking about these two differing philosophies, we didn't come away with a clear winner. And that was because I said they were kind of too different to be able to compare. But if there's one thing that I've learned about audio over the years, it's that not enough people's videos are putting the time, effort, and energy into really fine tuning their audio work. And so it's with that reasoning that I give a slight edge here again to Premiere Pro. Rendering and exporting. Look, this is gonna be a really quick section because there's really not actually a lot to say. Final Cut, because of its freakish ability to really efficiently process codecs, as well as the fact that you've got background rendering happening during the entire creation of your project, makes it way faster at exporting video. When we just look at the raw export times between these two programs with the same project, it's not even close. There's a clear winner. It's Final Cut. Next section, playing well with others. So basically everything we've covered so far has to do with the program at just stock usage. Somebody putting together a video and wanting to upload it to say, the internet. But as you start to scale up your production quality, you start to run into the option to do things a little bit differently. And this is where Premiere Pro really starts to shine. Simply put, Premiere Pro plays well with others. Basically, a lot of Adobe's other programs have become industry standards, and there's a lot of times when you'll find yourself being able to work with project files from other programs directly inside of your Premiere Pro project. The typical example you'll hear is that you can just take an After Effects file and just drag and drop that project into Premiere Pro and have it dynamically linked. Then making a change in After Effects will show those same results in Premiere Pro only moments later. Check out our video here on After Effects versus Premiere Pro if you want more info. But it's not just limited to After Effects. The same goes for working with audio in Adobe Audition. And this is one that I actually personally use a lot because we've switched from recording directly into Premiere Pro and we actually record all of our voiceovers in Adobe Audition. The fact that you can work flawlessly between each of these different programs makes it feel a lot less like you're hiring out the work to be done by somebody else and way more like you're upgrading a limb on your own body. To be clear, Apple does have sort of an equivalent with programs like Motion or Logic, but these feel a lot less like they're sort of this cohesive family and more like they're distant cousins who you never really get to see much of. Not to mention when you try to learn these new programs, it doesn't feel like your knowledge of Final Cut really has any benefit at all when you're learning. It's like you're starting from square one. And part of playing well with others isn't just the programs that you can work with, but the other people that you're gonna be working with as well. Over the last few years, Adobe's really been pushing the idea of working with teams within Premiere Pro, and they've come up with some really amazing features. 
Things like being able to work on a project over a network. And that way, if you have anybody in the same studio as you, you can actually give them access just based on the fact that they have access to that network. Even with the functionality of giving only select people access to privileges for certain projects. You could almost start to think of it like Google Docs, except just for video. Bottom line is that both of these pieces of software will actually end up creating a great video for you. But if you're working within a team of people who all want access to the same project file, or who want to contribute to different parts of the same overall project, then Premiere Pro is going to be a way better option for your studio. And it's with the help of this team player mentality that we give this win to Premiere Pro. And finally, motion graphics templates. Motion graphics support has been a big topic of conversation in video editing, and for good reason. Having pre-made templates that are quickly and easily customizable within the project saves you a crazy amount of time as a video editor, without locking you into something that might not quite be perfect for you. Whether you're Premiere Pro or Final Cut, there's plenty of sites to be able to pick up some awesome motion graphics templates that are either After Effects based, motion based, or just straight up Mogart files. And now for absolutely the most biased part of the video, at Motion Array here we have tons of Premiere Pro templates for you to check out. I've linked to a bunch of my personal favorites in the description below. So what's the final verdict? What program should you choose? I really think that if these two programs could talk, they would say something like the following. Premiere wants to help you get the best possible video project you can imagine, even if it takes a little bit longer and requires a team of people. While Final Cut Pro X is saying that it wants to make your video editing experience fun, fast, easy, and user friendly, even if that means being a little less flexible. Both of these pieces of software are great, and there's just way too many variables to make one a clear cut choice for absolutely everybody. So let me give you some quick recommendations based on my personal opinion. If you're exclusively a PC user, planning to work a lot with other industry standard tools like After Effects, you plan to work in large teams, or you value the flexibility of having almost limitless possibilities, go with Premiere Pro. And if you value efficiency, stability, and a program optimized for an awesome user experience, go with Final Cut Pro X. I love both of these pieces of software. I've actually used Final Cut and Premiere Pro at different points in my career to edit videos professionally for pay. But as of recording this video right now, I actually use Premiere Pro on a daily basis, and that's actually what I cut this video on that you're watching. And I know that that's gonna make it seem like I have this affinity for Premiere Pro, and I probably do a little bit, but I wanted to let you guys know that. I wanna get you guys the truth, and I want you to actually know what's gonna benefit you the best in your particular situation. And guys, that's just been my overview of the differences between Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro X. I hope you found this information valuable and like it helps you to understand these two programs just a little bit better, and maybe even helped you come to a decision. If you like this video, we have tons more here at motionarray.com. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.